All right. What we're going to build now is an app that lets us use text boxes uh, to enter numbers in a calculator. So let's go ahead and create a new project, which we will call Text Box Calculator. And let's go ahead and set things up. So I'm going to begin by changing the title to be Calculator, like so. And let's go ahead and get started by thinking about the layout. So what I've got in mind is to have two text boxes where a user can enter a number in each one. And then we're going to have buttons corresponding to arithmetic operators, like adding and subtracting. Then we'll have another text box that shows the solution. So I'm going to go down to layout and I'm going to use a horizontal arrangement to put in the initial text boxes. So we're going to have the first thing we're adding and then right next to it, the second thing we're adding or subtracting or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and rename these. So I'm going to rename the first one to be operand one. Or, oops, I actually clicked on text box two. So operand two, I'm going to rename this one to be operand one. And now I'm going to modify these to be suitable for what we're doing. So I only want the user to put numbers in them. So I'm going to make these numbers only. And then the hint will be uh, enter first number. And then on the second operand, again, it'll be numbers only, and the hint will be enter second number. Having set both of these up, we can now put in a button for addition. And so I'm going to go ahead and name this the add button. And for the text on the button, I'm going to just put a plus sign. So that should be pretty intuitive for our users, I do believe. Now we need to display the solution. And so I'm going to drag a text box here and let's call this the solution box. The solution isn't going to have a hint because we're not going to allow it to be edited. It's going to be read only, a read only. And you know what? I think I'd like to have a label saying this is the solution. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a horizontal arrangement. I'm going to put a solution in it. And then I'm going to grab a label. And the label is going to say solution. And so this is a pretty nice layout for the app, I think. So let's go ahead and program it. So when the add button is clicked, we want to add together the values from those text boxes. So I'm going to go to the math blocks. I'm going to grab an adder. Um, then I go to my operands. I'm going to get the text from them. So I'm going to have operand one text and then operand two text. And those are going to get added together and we want to display these in the solution box. So I'm going to set the solution box text to be that and I'm going to just put that right up there. So I'm going to go ahead and try this out. So I'm going to connect to my app inventor companion app. Let's see if those take a moment. Looking through various things on my phone. Scanning the QR code now. And here it is. So here's my app. 
And it's got the hints, enter first number, enter second number, and then the plus sign. And so let's try it. So I'm going to enter. So, you know, the numerical keypad comes up. We said numbers only, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to have 45 in my first number and five in my second number. And when I add them, I get 50. So this works pretty well. Uh, it's very, very straightforward. I want you to pause here. And what I want you to do next is add three more buttons. I want you to add a subtract button, a multiply button, and a divide button. So you're going to find in the math blocks, the appropriate blocks for each of subtract, multiply, and divide. Add those to the interface. And the way that I want you to lay this out is use a horizontal layout to put all of those buttons in a row here. So you've got plus, then minus, times, and multiply. And uh, see what you can do with that. I'll see you in a moment. All right, welcome back. I'm going to show you my solution to the challenge. So I'm going to go over to layout first. I'm going to grab a horizontal arrangement. I'm going to drag my plus button in there. Now I'm going to add three more buttons to it. This one, two, and last but not least, three. Now I'm going to go ahead and start renaming everything. So this last button I added is going to be my divide button. Then this will be my multiply button. And this will be my subtract button. Then I am going to change their text. So my subtract button text will just be a minus sign. My multiply button text, I'll use a, a letter X. And then my divide button text. Typical keyboard doesn't have the nice little, you know, two dots and a line through it. So I'm just going to use a slash for division. All right, so now I'm going to go over to my blocks and I am going to program these buttons. So let me start with the subtract button. When the subtract button is clicked, I well, I want to set the solution box back. Be let's go over to math. Uh, I want it to be subtraction. Yeah, here we go. And what I want to subtract are I want to have operand one minus operand two. And now let me do the same for my multiply. So multiply button. When that is clicked, I want to set my solution box text be uh, operand one times operand two. So here's operand one, here's operand two, and we're going to put that in there. And then my final button is divide button. So when divide button is clicked, I again want to set my solution box text. And this time, of course, I'm going to pick the division option over there. And I again need my operands. And there we are. So now I'm going to, oops, yeah, I'm going to reconnect my disconnected AI companion. This will just take a moment. And so I have scanned the QR code. And now I am going to do some math once it pops up. 
All right, so this is what my interface winds up looking like. You see you've got all of those arithmetic symbols laid out nicely as buttons. And so then we can try stuff out. We can try uh, 42, uh, divide 42 by seven. And we find out that indeed 42 divided by seven is six. If I want to multiply it, I can just hit the multiply button. And I see that 42 times seven is 294. I can subtract them. 42 minus seven is 35. Now, something that's a little clunky about this is that if I wanna change the numbers, I have to go and edit them in the text boxes. And what I'd really like to be able to do is just clear them out. So I'm gonna add a button to clear so that I can do another computation. So let's go back over to the designer and I'm gonna bring in a button, which I'm gonna call the clear button. And then the text is going to be clear. And so now I'm gonna go into the blocks and I'm gonna set up my clear button. So, whoops. Here's clear button. So when my clear button is clicked, what I wanna do is I want to set all of my text boxes to be empty, to not contain anything. So I'll go to set solution box text. to, whoops, yeah. Uh, so I want empty text and so I can click on text and grab an empty text there. And then I wanna do the same thing for my operands. So I'll set operand one to empty, operand two to empty, and my solution box to empty. So now, um, if I come back to my interface, I could have 42, seven. So I have 42 divided by seven and that's six, no problem. And now if I want them to go away, I hit the clear button and now I can enter uh, whatever else I want. So for your next challenge, clearing isn't always what we want, you know, because sometimes what we want is to keep calculating things. Like it's pretty common, um, like if you're balancing your checkbook or something, to want to add something to the result of what you had before. So what I'd like you to do in this challenge is create um, a button which um, we'll call accumulate. And so when you click the accumulate button, your solution should move up to be the first operand. And then the second operand will be empty and the solution will also be empty. So we'll just kind of move it up here and that'll let you do like an incremental calculation. So go ahead and create the accumulate button, uh, which will copy this value up here and then we'll erase this value and this value, okay? So go ahead and do that and then come pause the video, try it out and then come back here when you're ready to see my solution. All right, so let's go over my solution to accumulate. I am going to use a horizontal arrangement. I'm gonna put the clear and accumulate buttons uh, together um, because I feel like they've got related uses. There are different ways that you want to keep going. You might wanna forget everything you were doing or you might want to continue to work on it. Oh, whoops, I meant to call that accumulate button. There we go. And then the text will be accumulate. You might think of a more intuitive term than that. It's just what came to mind for me. Uh, feel free to use something else. So now I'm gonna program my accumulate button. So when the accumulate button is clicked, so what we want to do is make the copy of the solution to be operand one. So I am going to set operand one to be whatever 
solution box currently is. So I'm going to go down to get my solution box text. I'm going to make operand one equal to that. Then I'm going to clear out the others. You know, so I'm going to clear out operand two, and I'm going to clear out my solution box and this can go away. So let me try this out. I'm going to once again have to rescan my QR code. Scan QR code. Okay. It's connecting. Okay. So now let's say I enter the first number eight and my second number is seven. And now I'm going to add them eight plus seven, 15, no problem. Now I hit accumulate. So I've got a 15 as my first operand. And now let's say I'm going to add a four. Add. So 15 plus four is 19. And then I can hit accumulate. And now I've got 19 up there. So that works pretty well. Now let me show you something that would not work as well. What if we put solution box text? We set that to be empty before we moved it over. Now, in that case, so right now I'm at 19, and let me go ahead and add six. So I go 19, whoops, plus six, 25. Now when I hit accumulate, everything's gone. It works just like clear. So what went wrong? Well, if we look over at the code, we see, if we zero out our solution and then we set operand one to be the solution, well, that means the nothing that's now in the solution is in operand one. So the order is actually really, really important. We have got to copy over the old solution box value to operand one before we do anything else, or otherwise, you know, we're, we're going to be in real trouble. So one last little thing I want to show you all with this app is that, you know, when I was showing you the app, the numbers were really, really tiny, actually. And they actually don't have to be. So if I click on a text box, uh, I can go over to properties, and there's a property called font size. So let's say I want to make them twice as big. Uh, so let's make font size twice as big for all of these. So I'm going to go from 14 to 28. So now let me do some calculations. So um, one funny thing that happens actually is that my hints got so big that they kind of spill out of the boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and change my hints. So the first hint, uh, I'll just call this num1. And I'm going to call this num2. And so now, if you look at the app, uh, you know, the hints are, whoops, trying to get a good angle there. The hints are easier to read. So I'll only put in some numbers. Uh, so five, five times four. Oops. Five times four twenty, much easier to read. Now, of course, I should also change the font on the font size on my label here, so that everything looks similar and balanced in the layout. So there you go. Um, so yeah, you're not limited to those sizes. You can change them to whatever you think the app needs to look good, and you shouldn't hesitate to do that. So as always, uh, I can encourage you to continue playing around with this, having fun with it, uh, trying and experimenting with different things, and I will see you next time.